Hello Simmers, welcome or welcome back to Satch on Sims and today we are ranking the worst packs for The Sims 4. For today's video, I have made a presentation which I am very excited to share with you. Hang on, my guys, it's going wrong. It's showing the wrong bit. You can tell I'm new to PowerPoint. Honestly, I haven't used this thing since school. I have absolutely um, no idea what's happening. Eventually. The worst packs for The Sims 4 in 2021. By Satch on Sims. This is our Sims 4 presentation overview. First we are looking at the worst kit, then we are looking at the worst stuff pack, then we are looking at the worst game pack, and then we are looking at the worst expansion pack. First, let's look at kids. Throwback fit kit. So I am, I'm not gonna speak like this throughout the whole presentation. I try and be normal, like, I'm not gonna lie. I did put a lot of annoying basic level GCSE transitions in here. I, I do not, I did try and keep them at a minimum at the end, but they are a bit heavy at the start. So I do apologize. As I was saying, the worst kit that we have is throwback fit kit in my opinion. And here is why. Firstly, let's look at the good points just to be nice. And that of course is this bucket hat which I actually really really love. I haven't downloaded this kit myself but if I did have it this is probably the only thing I'd use from the pack. So next let's have a look at the bad points. Part one which is wait for it to load. This um, skirt, which is very bad. Next up, uh, this top, what which is, is very that? bad. And then we have the price. What I'm basically saying is, you are paying for some really naff geometric shapes, which could have been put together by anybody in about 10 minutes. I know they had a theme which is retro stuff. I just feel like the theme wasn't used to its full potential. Yes, if I go back, yes, we've got some like geometric things, but let's be honest, like it looks like it's from Primark. It doesn't look like funky or cool. They could have used brighter colors. They could have used more fun, interesting patterns like the pattern on my top. Do you know what I mean? But they didn't. And back to the point that I was originally on about with this, which I completely neglected to talk about was the price, which is the point of the part three slide guides. I'm not very good at presentations. I am a YouTuber, not a presenter. I am sorry. Basically, we are paying £4.99 UK. I don't know what that is in dollars, maybe like five American dollars. I don't know. Although it doesn't sound like a lot of money it is very overpriced seeming that you don't really get that much in the pack next up let's move on to stuff packs first up we have got my first pet stuff this is the worst stuff pack we have for the game and if you don't know why um you've been living under a rock <laughs> so for those who don't know my first stuff pack is dlc for dlc because the sims 4 cats and dogs expansion pack is dlc but in order for my first pet stuff to work you first need to have installed the cats and dogs pack so it's basically dlc for dlc allegedly my first pet stuff does contain with how content that should have been included in with cats and dogs but they didn't for whatever reason. The pets pack for every single Sims game has always categorically been the number one most popular pack and in my opinion EA have found a way to capitalize on that by giving us two packs instead of one and fittingly this is why I've made the bad points section of my PowerPoint slide everything. But seriously though, like even if this was included in with the Cats and Dogs expansion pack, which it should have been anyway, I do just want to appreciate how terrible is all this Crate Sims stuff. Like look, look, so we got like a mullet thing, not gonna lie, that's not my style, I wouldn't have imagined that on anybody. The men's haircut as well it looks absolutely terrible, it looks like me when I've just woken up in the morning. The pet stuff is uninspired, I know they try to like make adorable looking pet clothes, I do feel like they could have gone a little bit further further of it and give us some more, as you know, pets costumes. Although this is an unpopular opinion, I actually don't mind the My First Pet Stuff pack if it actually came with a lot more stuff for your pets instead of just the basic stuff like this. Who wants a knitted onesie for your dog and cat? Not me. In addition to that, the actual like sim stuff is lazy. If we just look right here at this t-shirt here with the splatters on it, it's absolutely uninspiring. I could have made that myself in five seconds. In fact, I've seen other Sims YouTubers make it themselves in five seconds to prove a point that it was a really lazy thing to do to put that in there. And, um, oh, we got a spinning animation. Didn't realize I put that in there. Anyway, as you can see here, Oh no, I got rid of it. There we go, we got it back. And if we look at basically the furniture in it as well, again, it's very uninspiring. Um, there's not really that much there that's good. 
We've got like a wall chart here, never use that. We've got a corner sofa, which is really ugly. We actually had a corner sofa like this in the cats and dogs pack. This one is basically the same thing, but uglier. You can't really see it in the picture, but we then got an aquarium coffee table, which looks absolutely horrendous. We then have this thing, which looks like it should have been sold on Love Honey. We've again then got some blinds, which to be fair, they are all right, they're not bad. And then you'll notice that we have all of this yellow furniture. Now this yellow furniture actually follows the exact same style as the furniture in Cats and Dogs, which allegedly indicates that this stuff could have been included with Cats and Dogs, but wasn't for whatever reason, and instead sold in My First Pet stuff. And last up, we have the gameplay. When you look at other stuff packs, like Paranormal Stuff, which came with so much gameplay, this pack literally includes Hamster Cage, which is the only form of gameplay, which in my opinion is gameplay which should have been included in the Cats and Dogs pack originally. In fact, everything in this pack should have just been included included in Cats and Dogs, but it wasn't. Next up, we've got Game Packs. Now, my least favourite Game Pack of all time is... Spa Day. Now, if you are wondering why Spa Day is my least favourite game pack, that is basically because, um, oh no, first, I, f I forgot what I put my presentation hang on. This is a good point before we get to the bad points. Do you know what? I've got to be nice, got to be nice. Do you know what? We've got to have a little bit of positivity in here. If this was just a negative video of me ranting, do you know what? It wouldn't be a very nice video to watch. So here are the good points. There's only one and it's basically just modern furniture. I absolutely love this furniture. If you look in my bedroom, oh no, my green screen's up, hang on. If you have a look, like, you're, oh, I can't be bothered to show you my whole bedroom so you can just, like, see a little bit here. But, like, I've got white stuff, got a white bed, white walls, a white door. Uh, what else can you see in the picture? White wardrobe with my towel hanging on it. I just, you know... Ugh. I just like white things and grey things and modern things. So if you are a builder, this pack is amazing. However, if you do not care about building, then let's take a look at the bad points, which is basically the boring gameplay. All you do is what? Meditate, get your feet rubbed. Like in real life, that sounds amazing. Not being funny, couldn't care less about watching my Sims get their back rubbed. And to make it even worse, you can't even run your own spa. If we take a look at a pack like Dine Out, which you know, you can eat in a restaurant, but you can also own a restaurant and run the restaurant. In this pack, you can't own and run a spa like that. You can basically just go to the spa like any normal venue. And to be honest, it doesn't really appeal to me because of that. I do think they could have made this pack go a lot further. And in order to make this pack go further, I think they should have made it an entire venue pack. Instead of just being a spa, being able to go to a spa or run your own spa. Being able to go to the gym or swimming pool, run your own gym and swimming pool, run your own cinema, whatever. I feel like they should have looked at this pack idea from a different perspective and just made it bigger so that it was more in depth. But with that said, let's take a look at the worst expansion pack. Guys, I love that transition with the origami crane. Are you ready for it? The worst expansion pack in the world is going to be... Cats and dogs. Now, I know this is such an unpopular opinion because everybody loves a pets pack. It is always the most popular pack theme of any Sims game ever. But I do feel like the cats and dogs pack fell short in the Sims 4. And the reason why is because it's not a pets pack. It's literally just cats and dogs. If we take a look at the good points before I'd be negative though. Firstly, let's just look at the world. Brindleton Bay, which is absolutely stunning. Love this world. I live in the world all the time. Um, I haven't actually mentioned it on here, but you do have have the ability to run your own veterinary clinic and I love the ability to run my own vets or go to the vets. We've never had it in The Sims before and honestly it's such an amazing feature. I love it so much. If we just take a little look at the previous Sims titles we've had. In The Sims 1 we had cats, dogs, birds, fish, reptiles, raccoons, skunks, monkeys. I feel like I can do this like a rap. Boom, boom, boom. I feel like, I hope there's like some royalty free, copyright free rap music I could just put on in the backgrounds. Are you ready? Sims 2, cats, dogs, birds and fish, guinea, pigs, wolves, Sims 3, cats, dogs, horses, birds, snakes, turtles, lizards, deer, raccoons, rodents, unicorns, <gasps> Sims 4, cats and dogs.
And that's the problem. And I know for those of you who own cats and dogs, you're gonna say, Satch on Sims, we do actually have raccoons and foxes in The Sims 4. However, they are not actually raccoons and foxes. They are basically skins for the cats and dogs. So basically the foxes are actually just like a fox coating put on a dog. So it's basically just a dog that looks like a fox. And the raccoon is a cat that just has a skin and fur that looks like a raccoon, but it's not, it's just a cat. It was just such a lazy way of going Going about it and it just really highlights the lack of thought and effort that went into this pack. I know they put a lot of effort into the creator pet mode in Cass, however other than that the pack just falls short and it feels unbalanced. And there is one more thing that I really hate about this pack and that is the pet beds. If we again take a comparison with the Sims 1 pet beds, taking into account this game was released in like 1999, but first we've got the fleecy pet bed that looks very very comfortable. We then have the like old fashioned wooden and leather beds but then we've got this absolutely incredible palace of the bed which I absolutely love then if we take a look at the Sims 2 pet beds I'm sorry the images are really low res here but you can see on the top we've just got a basic flat square then we've got a basic basket we've got like another kind of royal one that looks like a bit of a sofa and then we got some nice pattern square ones then we take a look at the Sims 3 we only actually got two pet beds here which is not very good but as you can see we've got a nice plush leopard print one we got another plush sofa what would you call that Material, like sofa material. And then we take a look at The Sims 4, take a look at The Sims 4, take a look at, and we've got a square pancake and a circular pancake. And again, this just highlights the lack of thought and effort that went into this pack. If I was the creative director for The Sims 4 and I was looking at this pack, I want so many different bet beds. I want one of those ones which has like a tent. I want a plush one. I want one that looks like a really expensive palace. I want one that looks cheap and all ripped up. I want a huge one. I want little ones. There are so many different types of pet beds they could have done, but they just gave us flat pancakes. And worst off, if we even look at my first pet stuff, give us a minute to go back. As you can see, we also got two more flat pancakes, another flat square and another flat circle, which I'm pretty sure were basically just the same meshes, but altered a little bit. In previous Sims games, we had things like rodent infestations or like raccoons that would sneak onto your lot and funny, quirky things like that. And in The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs, we just didn't have anything fun or quirky. I just feel like it was a really lazy effort and they, obviously this is just my speculative alleged opinion. I just imagine these like old men in an EA board room having absolutely no idea how you know the sims works and just saying yes let's capitalize on this let's just give them the bare minimum and call it a day but anyway that is it on my presentation of the worst packs for the sims 4 but other than that everybody thank you so much for your time today let me know down below which packs you hate the most because i love to hear it but other than that thank you so much see you next time